And um, on that issue uh, of getting young people to care about the news, which at one point in time seemed like it was never going to happen, it was useless because people didn't care uh, what the current um, online news network, and was led by AJ+, proved otherwise, is that people do care. So I want to ask you, Riyadh, what is keeping you up at night right now? So, Asalaamu As Alaikum, everyone. Um, so for me, trying to answer this question, um, you asked us a few days ago, has been keeping me up at night. Um, because I have my former bosses and colleagues sitting here, and I have my new bosses and colleagues sitting here. Um, so trying to navigate those two worlds is interesting. Um, for me, a lot of it is after this, um, and after the success of something like AJ+, it's always been what's next. Um, and that's a question that I get asked everywhere I go. Every person that I meet, always, what's next? AJ Plus did this, but what's next? What's coming next? Um, if I can get an indication from the room, how many of you have watched or know of AJ Plus? There you go. <laughs> and how many of you have heard of TRT World? OK. So there's still a lot we need to do to catch up to that. But so those of you who haven't, go and like our page on Facebook and follow us. Uh, nice plug that's a good out. way to know. Uh, <laughs> that's but, all the TRT world stuff that are clapping, exactly. by the way. Our logo looks like the, anyway. Um, so I mean, for me, what's next? It's getting into media has always been a personal thing for me. I dropped out of university after my first year. I started a technology company in South Africa. Media and journalism was never really an interest space for me. It was more about a sense of identity. Um, that happened for me kind of, I was in my last year of high school when 9-11 happened. And I kind of felt frustrated by the world speaking on my behalf and telling my story as a Muslim versus me being able to tell my own stories. Um, you know, this was way back in 2001 when the first camera phones were coming out. Um, but the potential of technology to connect people around different spaces, different ideas, has always been something that's dear to me. And that's something that I've always tried to bring into the work and the projects that we've taken on. Um, but what really keeps me up in eyes is trying to answer this question of what's next. And for me, I mean, everyone knows about AJ+. Everyone has seen the success of it. It's got, you know, I guess tens of billion, billions of views around the world. But yet, the world isn't getting any better. We have more information than we've ever had before. We have more access to information than we've ever had before. We have people on the ground who are being killed, bombed, shot at, uh, chemical attacks, famine, every possible thing being recorded in real time and posted online, yet we seem to be getting further and further away as humanity. And this information age, this access to information, this access to everything that was promised us through this decentralized network, that even when we tried to start AJ+, Plus, that we promised that we'd get to this space, to start conversations, hasn't happened yet. We've still seen crisis after crisis after crisis at our doorsteps. Um, and you know, when you asked me this question, it was something that, uh, that is really uh, sitting on my mind. And it took me back to one example when I traveled to the dub when I was at Old Zero with um, were done a few people back in, I guess it was 2011, uh, shortly after Arab Spring. And we went into the Dadaab refugee camp, and this was a space where people were leaving the famine in Somalia at the time. People had to choose which of their children they would leave behind because they didn't have enough energy to get to the camp. And those who made it to the camps were the most lucky ones that got there. And just imagine having to choose which child to leave behind on the side of the road. And just from there, we spent a day in the dub. We got on a flight. An hour later, we in Nairobi, staying in a five-star hotel, going out, having a buffet meal. And you know, just this four-star hotel. Sorry, it was a four-star hotel. <laughs> um, but having this full-on buffet meal, um, you know, all the food we could eat, just an hour flight away, when an hour earlier, we seen people who had nothing. And this is the world we live in. I mean, right here, I was sitting in the Hilton, having our buffet meals, walk 100 meters outside. There are Syrian children who are refugees who are sitting outside, coming up asking for lira. And this is the world we live in right now. And we've, have we become so numb that these things don't impact us anymore, that we like, we share, we think we've done our duty, we think we've built AJ+, we think we work for all these big media corporations, we think we're doing all of these things, but what change is it actually bringing? And for me, that's what keeps me up at night, and that's the answer is what's next? How can, what role does media play in moving us forward as humanity? is not enough just to put information out there anymore because putting information is not enough. I mean, we're not seeing that change. We're not seeing tangible impact. How can we create a conversation? How can we create these spaces? How can we go back to what does it mean to be human? How can we get out of this like cycle, out of our echo chambers, out of this just sharing something and thinking we've done our bit? Um, and that's something I don't have the answer for yet. 
Um, you know, and this is something that, you know, we all kind of need to figure out. I know a lot of you are working in media and, you know, my panelists here probably have better answers than I do, but it's a collective responsibility, as you said. I mean, it's something that sits on all of our shoulders, regardless of whether you're working for a big media organization, whether you're an individual, wherever you sit, it's about what are we going to do to actually have tangible change in the world, because we need it. And we need it now more than ever. It's the largest humanitarian crisis in our lifetime. And it's something that, yeah, I think, as you said, it's something that should be keeping all of us up at night, um, not just me. Thank you for that, Riyadh.